going on guys and welcome back to another BuzzFeed test. Now, if you've been watching for any extended period of time, you would know that normally I do the most commonly suggested recipe. One that gets suggested time and time again or that gets a ton of thumbs ups. But the past couple months I've kind of been avoiding one. And of course, that is the vegan mac and cheese. Now, prepare yourselves because I have to make a confession. I am, got you, allergic to peanuts. And not just peanuts, all nuts. Almonds, tree nuts, cashews, hazelnuts, walnuts, anything you could think of. So what does that mean? That means in my lifetime I've never eaten a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or Reese's cup, or Nutella. And I'm sure you're all gonna just load the comments with how bad that you feel for me. Now while some of you beautiful people will be commenting that, others will be saying, David, what does this have to do with vegan mac and cheese? Very simply put, there's cashews in it. So I came up with three alternatives to be able to make this video. Number one, I was gonna just exclude them all together. There would be no hassle. The only thing is, I'm sure most of you guys wouldn't approve of that. Number two, I was just gonna suck it up and make it be very careful not to touch it and then let other people in my house try it for me. The only problem with that is if it gets all over the countertop and on freaking the blender and everything, it's just gonna be a nightmare. So that's not gonna work either. Number three, and what I'm going to do today, I went online, I found Livestrong.com, and that gave me three alternative foods that could replace cashews. Which is why today I'm gonna to be trying this recipe three different times with those different substitutes. So before you guys all roast me in the comments, let's get right into it. All right, my peeps, the base to make this recipe consists of elbow macaroni, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, some white onion, some yellow skin potatoes, and some carrots. Let's get all the prep work out of the way first. So grab your potatoes, peel them all up, and then cut them into one inch cubes. Side note, to all of you calling me a bum for not using a cutting board, I promise you this counter is faker than prank invasion. It is not real granite, and trust me, it is safe to cut on. Anyway, next peel your carrot and then dice that up as well. And then grab yourself an onion and you want a nice big wedge of that. So let's get to the cooking process. Grab yourself a small saucepan, throw in a couple cups of water, get those to a boil, and first throw in your potatoes. You're gonna let those cook up for about two minutes and then throw in your carrot. Let that cook for five more minutes. Throw in your onion. You could break it up because it does help the cooking process. We're gonna cook that for another five to seven minutes or until your potatoes are nice and soft like this. After they are all cooked, you're gonna strain them out and then hold on to your water. You're gonna need this for the sauce. The last thing you gotta do before we can assemble this is boil up some more water and then cook your elbow macaroni. That takes about seven to eight minutes. And then strain it up. All right, so here's what I did. Since I'm trying this recipe a ton of different ways, I didn't want to have to waste a ton of food. So I first blended it like the recipe called for. I threw in a cup and a half of the boiled water, followed by all the vegetables, and then a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. Blend that up thoroughly, about 40 to 45 seconds. And what I did was split that in half. Now the first substitute that I found for cashews was dried fruits. They said apricots or raisins. So I grabbed some dried organic cranberries that were $6 and threw in a quarter cup of those since it called for a half cup of cashews. Then poured that into half of the pasta that I made, mixed that up, and we get to this point. So you can clearly see the little bits of cranberry in there. They don't want to see me again. Yes, they do. They freaking love you. Since you guys love my mom more than me, she's back once again. It does not smell pleasant, I can tell you all now. Three, two, one. I don't like that. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. That was horrendous. I need chips or something. 0.5 out of 10. Not a good substitute. What would you say? Nothing. It's gross. Zero. Hard to swallow. Yeah, well, I didn't swallow it. Moving on. So for the second variation of this recipe, I just took the leftover puree that I made and threw in a quarter cup of Cheerios. Livestrong said that any whole grain cereal will work, so I'm assuming these will be okay. I blended that up and it gave it a very weird gloopy texture and then poured that into the remaining pasta. It's sort of looking like a, a baby food squash puree and smelling like an old moldy basement. Recipe number two, or substitute, I should say. This one smell? smells a little better. Three, two, one. 
This one's edible, at least. It's not good, okay. but I can get it down without a gag reflex. You wouldn't eat it again, but it was better than the last one. Better than the last one. Three out of ten. A little bit of an upgrade. How about you? One out of ten? Moving on again. All right, for the next two recipes, I had to whip up some more of the puree. So you guys know the drill. Grab two potatoes, skin those, skin your carrot, chop them all up. First throw your potatoes in the boiling water, then the carrot, let those go a few minutes. Once you add your onion and let that cook for a couple minutes, strain them all out, hold on to your water, and then quickly whip up some more pasta. Please excuse my horrible attempt at the BuzzFeed-esque jump cut. I once again pureed up all my vegetables, separated that in half, and added a quarter cup of sunflower seeds. This seems like it has the closest resemblance to nuts, so let's hope that this one bodes the best. Either way, I mix it up with the pasta, and let's give this one a try. Alright. Smells like cauliflower. Third attempt. Cauliflower is not bad. I have the highest hopes for this one only because I think seeds out of all these three are closest to nuts. So, three, two. Tastes like cauliflower. I still don't love it, but it is considerably better than the last two. A little better. Like, considerably. Not terrible. It doesn't taste like no, cheese. it's not gross. It tastes like vegetables. Yeah, it tastes like a little veg ve veggie pasta something. You have to just think of it as like its own separate thing. Just like a veggie macaroni something. Like if you try to call it a mac and cheese, like someone like me who eats it all the time, I'm like overly critical of it. True. I think I would give this a 6 out of 10 because I could eat this unlike the first two we tried. Not bad. Out of those three, do this one. But if you guys like today's BuzzFeed test, can we smash the thumbs up? Last time you asked for 1500 and we got it in like a day. We did? Yeah. Oh. So how much should we get now? 18. 1800? Yeah, I'm not going to be crazy. Yeah. Alright, we're going slowly up. Let's see how quick we can hit it. As always, all my social medias will be right down in the description if you want to follow me on those. If you have new recipes from Tasty or BuzzFeed or Tip Hero or anything, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, guys, have an absolutely awesome rest of your week. I will see you right back here next Thursday. Peace! This is the aftermath, ladies and gentlemen. What a mess. Get to washing, buddy. Get to washing. <laughs>